Hello everyone! So, it should be obvious by now to anyone who's seen pretty much any racing game video of mine that Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing is my favourite racing game of all time by a mile. And while I've pretty much always been in love with this subgenre of racing games, one that I've actually also spent a lot of time with is arcade racers. And recently, one release that was so insanely fun and enjoyable that it almost made me rethink how I play racing games entirely. And that is Victory Heat Rally. This game is by far one of the most well-crafted and tightly designed arcade racers I've ever played. I initially played the demo and yeah, truth be told, I wasn't super wowed by it. While I did have a good time playing it, it definitely needed some more polish. Though it was clear that the devs had taken a pretty barren slice of the pie and revamped it into something that, given more time, could become a juggernaut in the racing scene. And now, here we are only a couple months later, and yeah, it's exactly that. For starters, something interesting that this game does compared to a lot of other racing games is how it doesn't try to overcompensate for anything. This is admittedly kind of a problem I have with a lot of racing games. It always feels like they lean too far in one specific direction and overcomplicate what needs to be done. Victory Heat Rally, however, not only keeps things simplistic, but uses that simplicity to its advantage. It takes very simple track layouts and combines them expertly with the mechanics the game gives you, to create such an intense feeling of enjoyment whenever you finally start to get a handle on things. And because of this simplicity, it actually means that basically every track in the entire game is insanely well done. The game has a huge track roster, and while normally that would mean some would be given more attention than others, that couldn't be further from the truth here. The game bases its cups around a specific theme and then works those themes in with specific mechanics. For example, some stages are better suited to drifting, others are better for high acceleration stats, and others focus more around aerial movement. But at the same time, they always manage to create something interesting, to the point that I can actually remember every single track in this game by name. Every course brings something new to the table, with each cup also expanding on a specific theme. And I don't just mean desert, beach, mountains, volcanoes, no, no, no. This game takes this two steps further and has each World Cup dedicate itself to a specific and completely unique style of play. Not only making each level unique, but still confining them to a specific theme makes them so much more interesting in the grand scheme of things. As when you have such simple concepts, it's really easy to just let the tracks fall into the same pitfalls over and over again and for them to blend into one another. But Victory Heat Rally avoids that pit entirely, simply by allowing each track to work around a similar concept, but to continue adding in new ideas and new themes of complexity as the cups go on. The Ice World, for example, should put the fear of God into even some of the best racers. And yet, this actually ended up being my single favourite set of tracks in the entire game. That's right, they didn't just make one good ice course, they didn't just make two of them, they made four! And they're all so insanely unique and ridiculously fun to play on! Not only is each course insanely detailed and well-crafted, but they also use slightly different mechanics and give certain drivers the edge on certain courses. And then it even ends with an insanely long three-segment slalom course that just has you Tokyo drifting for the entire race. That was something that seriously surprised me when I started playing the game. The course selection is split almost evenly between three lap tracks and segmented ones. This is something I've pretty much only seen Mario Kart 8 do before. And even then, only a very small number of tracks are actually segmented. This split between three lap courses and segmented tracks allows for so much more creativity, as the tracks can be much more expansive and creative, flinging you all over the place and careening around frankly absurd corners or tossing you across multiple huge gaps at once. The track design for this game was not only designed with actual races in mind, and the times where the team is allowed to get much more creative and is given this boundless freedom just puts the perfect icing on the cake. 
It's interesting seeing how some of the more basic tracks still turned out to be some of my favorites even after I'd 100%ed it. It just felt so right, drag racing around these simplistic courses and perfecting the mechanics of the game. You can clearly tell that not only did the devs have a huge passion for arcade races, but they also studied actual real-life races for inspiration here. And on top of that, their track design philosophy seems to have taken an almost entirely different direction to most other racing games. Instead of designing the tracks first and the mechanics are mostly separate, like the booster course pass tracks in 8 Deluxe or basically every single Team Sonic racing track, the devs instead obviously crafted these insanely good mechanics first and then built the track around them. And it allows for basically every course to work perfectly. This game thrives off its customization as its biggest mechanic, to the point that even the tiniest change in stats can have a massive difference in how you play the game. I was switching characters pretty frequently as I played through the main campaign, and I basically had to rewire my playstyle on the fly at multiple points during my run. It really pulls you in with how in-depth the game makes its roster. Each character has their own set of stats, with them usually having a specific type that they excel at. But the fact that you can tweak them slightly, both with how the car handles as well as how it can actually deal with the layout of most of these tracks, surprisingly makes this one of the most engaging and robust set of customizations I've ever seen. Rarely in any racing game I've ever played has such the smallest changes in stats not only change how a car feels to just drive, but also massively changes how you tackle certain obstacles as well. I seriously cannot overstate how wildly different each character feels when it comes to how they play. And honestly, I can't get enough of it. And it's actually also kind of surprising just how freeing this game feels thanks to these specific mechanics when it comes to building up speed. Forget racing on 200cc, this right here is 300cc and it is damn well proud of it. Being able to build up drifts with honestly one of the most unique takes on it I've ever seen, as well as buffering them in the air and even holding them while drifting on straightaways to gain an even bigger boost at the next corner, is some of the most genius ideas I've seen in such a long time. They're simple, but they perfectly embody the ideas of such an insanely skill-based game. You really do have to master all the mechanics to be the best here. And a ton of the tracks actually help you subconsciously learn how to do this. This is such a perfect example of the devs understanding how to teach the player without forcing tutorials down their throats. As I was progressing through the main campaign, the game was never holding my hand or forcing me to learn the mechanics outside of some occasionally skippable tutorials for the minigames which I'll cover in a moment. Instead, it just sets you on the track which may or may not have some kind of challenge you haven't seen before, and encourages you to experiment in order to pass it. There were multiple times where I actually just went back to replay certain courses over and over again. It's honestly kind of baffling how naturally the game teaches you how to master its mechanics without even trying. By the time I'd reached the third or fourth GP, I was already incorporating much more advanced techniques in order to get ahead. And speaking of getting ahead, this is a really small feature they didn't need to add in, but god it makes me so happy that they did. Whenever you build up enough speed to begin lapping people, because remember you can begin building up another drift before the boost for your first one ends, and it's also possible to gain a ton of speed faster than you can decelerate, if you decide to wake up and choose violence then you can ram into other players and send them violently flying off the track and exploding into pieces without you losing any speed. This really just brings the whole game together for me, because of course if you're going that much faster than the other racers, then hitting them at those speeds would cause something like this to happen. Again, it's the little details that really bring everything together. Speaking of the little details, the bonus minigames you can compete in are jam-packed full of them. Each one tasks you with improving a specific skill as you're going through the main campaign. Be it a better handling on when and where you boost, how to better handle drifting and how to take corners properly, how best to keep up speed on certain parts of the courses, and all under the guise of some fun and unique minigames. 
I do wish we were able to play these outside of the main campaign mode, as I haven't been able to find a way to do that just yet. But it doesn't take away from the fact that these missions can sometimes be surprisingly fucking brutal in the later cups. But also, they're so creative and inventive with how they teach you the mechanics without really trying that I keep coming back to them. I also appreciate how they don't overstay their welcome. These minigames are short, sweet, simple, and straight to the point. And even when one does repeat itself, they still go out of their way to keep it unique or to make the challenge somewhat more interesting. Either by using a specific course's layout to its advantage, or just tweaking things slightly to make it more difficult. I also love how, at the end of each major Grand Prix, a rival will be introduced who will challenge you to a 4-cup GP for the championship. And while, yeah, I do wish the characters had more time to show off their personalities, that's just because they are all so interesting. Not only does each character have a completely unique personality, but also has a completely unique way of tackling the race course. I was really worried when I fought the second one that the rivals would all just be the exact same and they'd basically be just another CPU with slightly more rubber banding. But not only could that not be further from the truth, but each rival gets exponentially harder. To the point that you need to be fully locked in to even stand a chance against some of them. I'm serious when I say some of these rival races are absolutely brutal on the right tracks. Some of them will be miles ahead for most of the race and will only have a single portion of the track where they lose time. And if you don't take that minuscule window of opportunity to pounce, you've basically already lost. I was stunned the first time this happened because they really do start sneaking up on you, and you have to be constantly checking behind you to see how close they are to overtaking. A lot of the late game ones require almost perfect timing on basically everything, with you almost having to snake around the entire course just to stay ahead. And the icing on the cake of all this is that the game doesn't just let you unlock these characters once you win the GP, oh no no no. Instead, you have to unlock a completely unique race where you and the rival will be placed on an entirely new course. Where it's just you, them, and the open road. And all you have to do is stay ahead of them. The further you or the rival pull ahead, the person in second place will have their health bar start draining. With the larger the gap meaning a much quicker drop in how much health you have. This is easily the single best way I've ever seen a racing game pull off a way to unlock characters. You can't just be tailing behind them for two and a half laps and then just squeak out a win at the end like you can in the GPs. No, you have to prove your dominance over them by getting ahead, staying ahead, and then dealing with whatever this brand new track you won't have seen before this point decides to throw at you. And these rival races are no pushover either. Each one continuously builds the tension by getting more and more intelligent and actually starts to give you a run for your money. The final one in particular, while I won't spoil it because this game only came out a few days ago, actually ended up giving me a genuinely hard time. And as someone who semi-regularly speedruns 200cc Mario cards, that's an insanely hard task to accomplish. A lot of the game's main campaign elements are things I'd love to see brought into their own game mode. And yeah, honestly, that's one of my only few criticisms. If you want to play the mini-games outside of the Championship Cup, well, too bad, because you can't. You also can't set up a 1v1 rival race with a friend, which I honestly feel like is a huge missed opportunity. This game mode screams that it was made specifically for multiplayer game modes, and yet it seems like it's just not possible to do so. Maybe it is and I haven't had too much time to mess around with the multiplayer just yet, but I can't seem to find anything to suggest that it does, so I'm gonna mention it here. My only other criticism is that I really wish the vehicles in the game were even remotely unique. I don't mean in terms of stats or anything, because I covered that earlier. What I mean is in terms of their visual designs. Even if the different ways of customizing the vehicles didn't change how they looked, I do wish at the very least each character had their own unique vehicle. Because, yeah, this does kinda drag it down a tiny bit for me. Vehicle expression is one of the best ways to get across a character's personality in a racing game. And with a roster bursting with interesting and unique characters, 
The fact that the vehicles look almost entirely identical is really disappointing, as it takes away from such a vibrant cast. I know these are extremely small criticisms, in fact I'd go as far as to say I'm basically nitpicking at this point, but that's really the only bad things I have to say about this game. Overall, the game is very one note, but goddamn, that note is one of the most pleasing and enjoyable notes to listen to. And it hits perfectly on the mark every single time it tries something new. I really hope this game gets some kind of DLC later down the line. Maybe a new Championship Cup entirely, or a few new characters, or some more minigames. Honestly, anything in terms of DLC would be great because this game just continuously pulled me back in over and over again and didn't let go until I'd 100%ed it. And honestly, it might just be the most fun game I've played this year. If you'd like to give Victory Heat Rally a try for yourself, then you can find a link to it down in the description below. While you're down there, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it even a little bit. Also, be sure to subscribe to help me on the road to 10k, join my Discord server to become a part of my community, all that good stuff. And before I go, I do apologize that this video was a little shorter than some of my previous ones. I've been super hard at work on a ton of upcoming content, and I just needed a bit of an easier one this week. With all that said, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, stay safe everyone. Peace.